My name is Joe Boldman. I'm an associate professor of electrical engineering and computer science and a principal investigator in RLE. We are instrumentation engineers, so we make things that uh, make experiments easier to do. What I like about this job is you live or you die based upon you. And typically you're doing that by the sort of the competitive advantage that you're getting is by developing some instrumentation or some other technology that allows you to study something in a way that no one else can or no one else has. One of the great things about RLE and, and even specifically where we are is that you have, first of all, a lot of research groups kind of in the same area, uh, uh, intellectually and physically in very uh, much the same area. And so the students are interacting with each other, but they're not intellectually so on top of each other that actually they're stretching each other, if you will. So they're learning things from each other. They're borrowing instruments from each other, doing things like that. So it's a really nice environment. But then that goes far enough afield that, you know, I can go and have a conversation with someone and actually have that impact my research. And so I think having all those different types of people in a small space is, uh, is more than the sum of its parts. What we try to do is to apply uh, advanced technologies and technologies that are small in size to problems in biology and specifically problems in uh, cell biology. And so really the fundamental question in our lab, you could put it, is that we're big people and the types of things that we're interested in studying are small, which are cells. And so what we'd really like to do is to figure out an instrumentation that lets our fingers, if you will, go in and move cells around, separate them from each other, physically manipulate them in order to study them better. What I found at MIT, which I didn't actually expect, was that the level of teaching is highest that I've seen at any place that I've been. And that's not what you would expect at a big research institution. I think teaching is, uh, helps me learn. It really gives me a good foundation for the material. And uh, it's just fun to try to help other people learn it or see things the way you see them. The students are the integral part. Students and postdocs are the integral part of what we're doing. My role is to get the resources, set the group direction, and help them uh, get over barriers and make sure they don't go too astray. But other than that, set them loose. I try to foster the kind of environment where someone can come up and say, well, you know, we've been doing this this way for three years or four years, but I think there's a better way to do it. And if what you're really interested in is solving a problem, then you're not gonna get so caught up in, well, but it's not the way we're doing it or things like that. And so uh, I think it's important for, for everybody in the lab to feel like they have the ability to make those kinds of statements. The students will talk to each other complain to each other about problems they're having and often find that you know one person is doing some protocol for coding some protein in their lab and oh, we've been struggling to do that and well they'll show them you know one will show the other and then things will get solved and the pace of research will move forward. There's a lot of different definitions or modes of success. One is student learns to become a researcher. I mean, that's my primary job here is to educate. 
So educating graduate students, turning them into researchers, helping them learn how to ask and answer questions, helping postdoctoral researchers learn uh, new areas of research, or get themselves prepared for their next position. And then there's also success for more basic on a, on a research front, which I think the ultimate success for us is either that uh, other people are adopting our technologies or that our technology by our, used in our lab is, is, is being used to answer questions that no one could answer before. You have to be always looking around. You have to be reading, you have to be talking to people. So you have to be continually expanding your boundaries that way and then bringing that to a bunch of people who are bright and enthusiastic, setting up challenges for them, giving them the resources, and then really setting them loose. And uh, you may have an approach to solving something or figuring something out, but uh, the most exciting thing is when someone comes to me and says, you know, your idea was wrong or bad or stupid, and here's a better way to do it. The message is here you're developing these tools which are, I mean, they're intrinsically neat. There's just no other way to, 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 to say it. And they have this huge potential for impacting how people do research and therefore how, uh, and therefore uh, human health.